Hello, uh, can you hear us? Unfortunately, you muted. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm sorry. I think you can hear me now. Sorry about that. I'll, I'll start again. So, uh, just check that you can hear me now. Yes. Is that, can you hear me now? Yes, all good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be providing a, an overview of graph data science and the graph data science library with near 4 j So uh, very quickly, what is graph data science? So it's basically data science where relationships matter. So it's all about thinking how can we incorporate that information about not just the data, but how that data is connected to other data and how do we incorporate that connectivity between the elements. And there's, broadly speaking, there's two categories where this might fall into um, when we start thinking about this. And some of this can be from a, a local aspect. And what we mean by this is We've got specific queries we want to ask because there's specific things that we're looking for. We know what we're looking for. We can put a finger on it. And this tends to be fairly local. And, and these also tend to be very quick things. And it'll be around sort of decision making or, or pattern matching. And if we think about some examples of this, these will be things like uh, for a person called Bob, tell me uh, who, who does, you know, who is he connected to up to four hops out? Maybe I want to know about how two people are connected. You know, what's the shortest path between them? Maybe I want to ask questions such as for a given pattern. So as an example, I want to look at a pattern. If we're looking at a movie database, for example, I want to bring back all of the people in this database that have been actors as well as directors. So there's something very specific that you know what you're looking for. Again, we're using the relationships, but these are very localized type questions that we're asking. The other side of this will be sort of this global analysis and iteration. And this, and this tends to be driven by graph algorithms. And we're going to touch on the different types of graph algorithms that there are shortly. But this is very much the case of looking at, let's go across the entire graph. And let's start to understand what are the qualities of that graph. So what are the qualities of the elements in there and how they're connected. And this is about understanding the structure because there'll be certain features in there that we're not necessarily going to be able to articulate with a localized query. But when we look across the entire graph structure, we start to get some very interesting features that we can go away, take away, and use the understanding to process further. So when we think about graph data science, there's lots of elements that go along and build out what graph data science is. And there's going to be a number of steps that we can go through to think about. So the first one will be the graph statistics. And this is the really basic understanding, the measures of what is the graph. And these will be the kinds of things such as how many nodes do I have? How many relationships do I have? What is the average uh, node to relationship density? So for example, Maybe if I'm looking at a um, who people know via LinkedIn, so who are people connected to LinkedIn, maybe I'm going to get an average node density of, say, 300 connections. If I was looking at a hierarchy, so product hierarchy, and I wanted to have a look at what was the average product category down to product, maybe I'm looking at five connections average and so forth. So let's have a look at the, sort of the very basic statistics around that graph, because that's going to start to describe what kind of questions we can ask in the structure and what models we're working with. And then we can start thinking about graph analytics. So this is where we're taking a bit further and we're starting to ask more specific questions of our graph and we're gonna get more specific statistics. So if we're starting to run some graph algorithms, we're going to get some information back about what's coming from there. And also there's more specific questions. And then the third prong is how can we use um, sort of graph data science, how can we use the graph algorithms and so forth to enrich our existing machine learning pipelines? Uh, as a very quick overview of this, many uh, models that are used tend to have uh, input data, and the input data doesn't take into account that 
it may be related to other input data going into our model. So what can we do? How can we use graph data science to make sure that we're reflecting in some way the connections between our data that may already exist there? So I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail on that. There is content that we've covered before that. But what I am quite keen to do is talk about the NIPJ graph data science library. And for those of you who have used the NFJ Graph Algorithms Library before, NFJ Graph Data Science Library is the uh, successor of that one. So it was previously a NFJ Labs project. It is now a full, fully supported NFJ product. And its emphasis is on supporting data scientists. And there's a lot of elements that come through it. So it is an enter enterprise grade uh, product. So it scales, it's uh, very powerful. It's very practical, it's got simplified syntax, and we're going to have a look at some of that as well. And it's very much targeted at being able to empower data scientists and data science projects to be able to run these features and do graph data science at scale and in production. So I'm gonna briefly talk about the different graph algorithm types, and then we're gonna to touch on which ones are implemented within the NFJ graph data science library. So uh, one of them category will be pathfinding and search. And as the name implies, it's all about things such as shortest path. So finding the shortest path between points weighted. So maybe we're going to be using this in something such as route planning, or we may be looking at some kind of path expansion. So how can we, if we're looking at supply chain, sort of branching out breadth and depth. The next one is centrality. So this is all about finding important or influential points within our network. And an example of where we might be using this. So let's say if we were looking at a network of friends, we want to find who are potential influencers in that network. So that would be an example of where we'd be looking for centrality or importance. Or another example may be if we're looking at a IT network as an example, and we want to find out what are potential single points of failure. So areas which are really well connected and we want to try and find those so that we can put in redundancy and so forth. And the thing with the centrality, we may be looking at how a node is connected to its immediate neighbors, but also centrality is going to be driven by how its neighbors are connected and its neighbors' neighbors are connected and so forth. Next one along is community detection. And as the name suggests, we're looking for communities. So this is all about trying to group together similar nodes together, similar entities together. And an example where we might be using this is if we were trying to, for example, group together products that people were buying based on the purchasing behaviors and the, the structure of the relationships there. Uh, another one is link prediction. And this is all about trying to find how entities might be connected. And this is going to be based on how they're connected to entities and is their sort of synergy. There's a number of algorithms that sit around that. And for example, how you might use this is if you were trying to suggest people you may know. So if you think about Facebook or LinkedIn and it suggests people you may know, that'd be an example of trying to find those, those hidden links. And uh, the other grouping here is similarity. And this is all about finding uh, common entities based on the graph properties. So for example, you want to, if you're trying to do entity resolution, there's lots of common properties or a lot of common relationships grouping together. So a very brief overview. And what we've got currently available in the graph data science library today are all of the ones that are listed up on the slide. So I'm not going to talk through all of them. I will leave this slide up for a couple of moments. And what I will highlight your attention to are the five algorithms that are involved. So you can see node similarity and similarity, page rank in centrality, and weakly connected components, label propagation, and living modularity in community detection. So we'll touch on those ones in a moment why those are involved. But you get flavor, we've got quite a few grouped together. And you may have noticed in the bottom in the bottom right corner, we've also got another group which don't of algorithms that don't necessarily fit in the five that we've got here, but these are either um, sort of helper, helper functions that don't fit in the functions, or these would be something that are run as part of the existing algorithms to 
help them work. So very quickly, I want to touch on the syntax. So one of the features that's come through with the new graph data science library is that the syntax is uniform across all of the algorithms. So irrespective of what algorithm you're going to run, you're always going to use this syntax. So let's just quickly step through this. So uh, you, you call it because so you, you're going to call the functions. And you always have the syntax of GDS. So obviously that's referring to the library. And in section here, tier, so the tier of support. So this is referring to the slide previously where I mentioned that we have some of the bold algorithms and the unbolded algorithms. So we're going to touch on that on the next slide about the differences between that. So we're going to call um, so GDS dot the algorithm name. So this is the algorithm that we're going to execute, the execution mode. And there are three modes, so we can either write. So what will happen is if we've specified a relationship or property that we want to result, write the results back to, when we call the right, um, right mode, it'll write the results back. Alternatively, we can stream the results. So this won't make changes to your underlying data. But if you've got a downstream process that you want to take the results of the algorithm to go and do something with them, so for example, some real-time recommendations, or some real-time um, fraud triggers, you can do that. And the third mode that you've got is stats. So it gives you the statistics of what that algorithm, uh, what, you know, what, what is the statistical output of the algorithm. So for example, how many relationships were used and so forth. And the next bit you've got is estimates. So this is an optional uh, add-on you can, you can put in when you're calling the algorithm. And what this will do is, Without running the algorithm, it will estimate based on the information you've provided. So what graph are you going to work with? What is the configuration that you've supplied? It will estimate the amount of memory that you need to run the algorithm. So this is really useful, especially if you're working with uh, working with a very large data set. And something to bear in mind, and, and now I'm going to touch on the, the, the tiers and the bolding. So there are the three tiers of support, and there's more information on the next slide. So the ones in bold are the sort of productionized, supported graph algorithm libraries. And those ones come with all of the right stream and stats option, as well as the estimate. Whereas the, the ones that are unbolded don't fit into that category. So they don't have the stats option available, and they won't be able to give you an estimate of how much memory the algorithm is going to use. But as you can see, you, everything follows the same syntax. And then here you've got graph name. So what you can do is if you're going to be running a lot of graph algorithms on the, on the same data set, if you're going to be working with the same graph algorithm, but you want to be adjusting the different parameters and so forth, what you can do is you can define what your graph is going to be. And the graph that you define that you want to run your graph algorithms on doesn't have to have the same structure as the data in your graph database, you can basically say, well, I want to skip some relationships and I want to bring this in. You can, you have that uh, flexibility to tailor what the graph looks like. You can give it a name and then you can keep running the function over and over. And then you also give some configuration. And in that configuration, you're going to specify things such as any algorithm specific parameters, along with if you're writing, what, where you're going to write your results to. So if we have a quick look at the tiers of support, so everything that was in bold, those are the product supported algorithms. So what that means is that the, these are the ones that have been fully tested for scale, for stability, they've been optimized. And if you run into problems with these ones, these ones are fully supported by the team. And then the next group we've got are the beta, so the beta algorithms. And these ones are candidates for a product supported tier. So these ones are currently sort of going through, uh, going through the phase of the, the steps that need to be done for stability, optimization, and so forth. And so that they are likely candidates that are, will eventually become the bolded ones that are product supported that have all the options around uh, memory estimation and stats and so forth. And then the other group that we've got 
are the ALF groups. And these are the experimental ones. So these are ones that we're testing out new algorithms. We're looking to see how they work. We're trying to understand the popularity behind them. And the thing to bear in mind with the alpha ones is that there are no guarantees around them. They may be removed from another uh, from a newer version of the graph data science library, and they could be changed at any time. So that's something to bear in mind, but they are still available. So where can you find the graph data science library? So you can, if you've got Neo4j desktop, you can install it straight away through there. So that's one of the available plugins. Uh, something to bear in mind as well is uh, 4.0 support for graph data libraries will be available at the end of the month. So it's not available just yet, but it is coming very soon. So you can uh, access the graph data science library from Neo4j desktop. Uh, you can use the graph data science, uh, graph algorithms playground. And we're going to have a look at that shortly. And this is a really cool tool that allows you to uh, try all the different graph data algorithms without having to worry about the cipher. And in fact, it will give you a cipher snippet that you can then go away and use. And the other option you've got as well is you can have work with the graph data science library in the near for j sandbox so here you don't need to install anything or set anything up or download you can run the sandbox and you've got between three to ten days to work with that and you've also got various uh, visual interfaces you can work with so you've got three sort of options there and what you can do as well is if you want to just access the the plugin on it, uh, the sort of jar on its own without going through those interfaces you can go to the download center and get a copy there and you've also got a link there to the documentation. So let's have a quick look at the graph algorithms playground. I'm just going to switch my screens. Okay. So here I am, I'm in Neo4j desktop. I've got a graph here. It's an empty graph, I've not installed anything yet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of plugins. So the graph data, uh, the graph algorithms playground uses APOC. So I'm going to add APOC. And it also uses the graph data science library, which I'm going to add there. So effectively in uh, desktop, you have the option there to add the plugins. And you can see we've got the graph data science library there to add as well. So I shall add that shortly once APOC has been downloaded and installed. And I'm now going to install this one. Excellent. So, um, so to install uh, the graph algorithm playground, so you go to graph application section here. And if you've not already got it installed, if you go to the graph apps gallery, so you, you go there and click on the arrow. It will give you. The, it will show you all the available graph apps, and there you'll see you've got the graph algorithms playground. So I'll just show you that quickly. So there you go. So it's available there, so you can install that. I I have it already installed, as you can see here. So what I'm going to do is start my database. So I'm going to start that. So this is an empty database. I've not put any data in yet. So we're going to quickly add some data in first before we start with the playground. And I'm going to use the movie database uh, sample code that you get when you run the FJ browser. So we should do that shortly once the database is started. So it's worth mentioning as well whilst it's starting. So what you have as well is you have some code samples. So if you don't have any data in your database and you want to run some of the pre-canned stuff, you can do that. So there is an option there. They've got three data sets which you can click on and run. So I will show you that quickly as well. So I'll also show you with some data that's already in the database.
it's taking a little bit longer than expected. We go okay, so it took, took a bit longer than expected, but there you go. So, database is now up and running. So, let's quickly put some data in. So, I'm going to open browser and I'm just going to load the movie database graph example. Okay, and I'm just going to do that by clicking the right to code. And movie database. And I'm going to run that. So something to bear in mind with the uh, graph algorithms playground is it runs on your data as is. So you don't have, you can't sort of alter it and go, well, actually, I know I've got a person acted in movie, acted in person. I want to skip the movie bit. I just want to run person to person. So you can't, you don't have that uh, level of control. It's cipher free. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to add an extra relationship because I'm going to show you how I run page rank on this. So what I'm going to do is if I show you the DD schema, and you can see we've got, um, you can see we've got person and number of ways interact with the with, uh, movie. And what I'm interested in is I want to do page rank on actors, so people, actors uh, and how they interact with each other. So I want to create a new relationship from person acted with person. So I'm just going to quickly do this. So this is basically I'm, I'm using. So this is this is movie here, um, and I'm just angling around, and then I'm going to create a relationship between them. So, acted with P two. Okay, so that's just going to create a relationship between um, per, uh, the pit persons using that. So we're going to run that quickly. And when I refresh my schema, you can see I've now added a acted with relationship or person. Fantastic. So let's start up the playground. So to start up apps that aren't browser, just press a little down arrow where it says open. And I'm going to open up the graph data science playground. Excellent. And then you can see here the different uh, algorithm categories we've got here. So the only one that we haven't got here is the um, the sort of link connection one. So I want to do some community detection, so I'm going to select that one. Uh, oh, no, it's not community detection. I want to do. Uh, I want to find centrality, so I'm going to select page rank. So I'm going to select a label here, which is going to be person. I'm selecting here acted with because that's the one we just created. And I'm going to use all the default settings. I, I don't have any weighted properties, so I'm leaving that blank. Uh, I'm not going to store the results. I just want to stream them. Uh, this is like number of concurrent threads it's going to run, number of iterations. And you know, so these now are, um, these two are the uh, page rank specific parameters. So I run that. So I didn't have to write any cipher. I can now run that as a query. And it's going to go away and find out the results for me. So we can see here, so Tom Hanks has got a nice nice high score there in comparison to his other actors. And again, I can click on visualization and it will show me, it will bring up some of the nodes and uh, it will render some of the connections there. So you can start to get a flavor of that and I can have a look at some of the weights put on there. So you get information around different actors that have been joined. And if I want to take that code away, and I go actually, I want to take that code and, and run it in the browser, and you can click on the code button. And here you've got a set of parameters. So this was the number of rows I, I want to send back to limit. So you can see it used here in limit. And in here in the uh, param config, 
here I'm specifying all of the, the bits and pieces that we would be uh, calling the algorithm. And if you remember, we talked about uh, we, we talked about um, that, we'd, we'd that, that config map where we'd put information in there. So that's what's going on here. So that's just creating that and we add it in. So uh, that, that's an example. We can copy the route, um, copy the code here and so you use, you use the parameters and use the code and you can run that in your browser rather than running it through the tool. And I've talked about the data sets that are available as well. So if you look at the bottom here, we've got the yellow database symbol. Here you can also load some of the data as well. So you've got uh, Game of Thrones, European Roads, and Twitter data sets. So you can use those to play again, play with uh, using the graph data science playground. So you have the option as well. So let's quickly go back to this. So um, quick mention before we finish up. So if you haven't already, do check out the Graph Algorithms book. It is free, free PDF, but it's only free until next Wednesday. So if you haven't already got it, get yourself a copy. So it talks through worked examples and why we use the different graph algorithms. How would you use them, both in Spark and Near4j? So you've got some great examples there. So this is based on the previous graph algorithms library. But Thomas Bratanich has put together this fantastic porting examples of how would you uh, take the examples that are in the book and recreate them in the graph data science uh, library. Not available. So again, you, we talked about the plugins. So you can either download des desktop and have it via um, install plugin via that, or you can go to download center and get the jar and do that manually. If you want to have a play with the graph data science sandbox, you don't need to install anything. You don't need to download anything. Here's the link that will get you directly to that sandbox there. And you've got the documentation there. And in that case, thank you very much. I'm running to time. I'll have a quick look if you've got any questions. So if you've got any, do share them. So let's have a look. Any questions? OK, so what I will say is the next session will be on APOC and supercharging your project. You've got the link here. If you, you look at the top of the, the chat window, you have got the it pinned up there for the address for the big marker. So should see you there shortly. Thank you very much.